the people that you know, the relationships that you make that are genuine go a very long way rather than getting a quick buck of like sleeping with a guy or a woman just to get one row. It's one row. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and somebody told me that. They're like, bro, what? It's, just, it's just one row. Firstly, how are you, bro? How's your heart? <laughs> it's pure, bro. It's, it's pure. pure. It's happy. Yeah. Yeah, man. You're definitely in a good space. Yeah. Um, you're in season. Something that takes uh, a lot of hard work to get to to be in season. Yeah. For, for many, many people, there's a lot of ups and downs yeah. before you finally get your yes. Would you say you're in your yes season in, in many areas? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think I'm, I'm very much in my yes season, man. Um, like you said, it takes a whole lot of a whole lot of hard work. That like tip of the iceberg, people don't see all the underneath work and all the years that have you know. Like for instance, it'll be like, oh man, you know, congratulations. You know, you just came in and you're killing it. And I'm just like, you just came in. Mm-hmm. I've been here for like eight years, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Like not even counting theater and all the little stuff that you used to do. Just purely trying to break into the industry mm. and coming to Joe work for that. How does it feel to be the guy who's having so much sex when he goes to work? <laughs> I think it's, it's a mental preparation type thing, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's more of a mental preparation type thing. Because um, like acting, is, is, I believe, is very spiritual, man. Um, so even when we are doing those things, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's more of a spiritual connection more than anything else. So I think those are very important to, to nurture our men to be cognizant of. Um, so you're able to um, navigate through them. There is a lot of criticism at the moment regarding sex scenes in yeah. TV, not not just on any particular show, just yes. throughout the world. Um, what is your perspective of how we are currently marrying sex into art and creativity? I think it's 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 us developing, man. I think it's us developing. It's us getting to a more real and authentic space of of storytelling because i i mean as a even as a as a as a, as a young kid i used to look at american productions and I'd be like man they're so they're so ahead even in terms of their their thinking they're so ahead even in, in in terms of what they're willing to show in terms of realness and authenticity um i, I don't think there's 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 a there's too many or too little of sex scenes anywhere they placed where they should be placed for certain purposes of the story um, and I feel like they play a major part in telling the story authentically as well. So I think we had a place where we're developing in South Africa, and I feel we had a we had a we had a good space as well because now we're competing directly internationally. I mean, like international platforms that we have now that we are um, engaged in, right? So we're competing with American stuff at this point. You're a lead on Umjolo and Netflix, and and hence I alluded to how did it feel to go to work. Um, all the time and, and have all these sex scenes. Yeah. Um, how do you mentally prepare for that and maybe take somebody to the space of having to leave Tyson and be the character who's a lead, yeah. who's also promiscuous in their storyline, yeah. um, but still navigating, trying to be committed. What does it take to prepare for that? And 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 what do the sex scenes actually consist of behind the scenes? Um, so in preparing for them, Man, I like I said, it's it's a, it's a, it's more of a spiritual preparation, um, a mental preparation. Um, before that, um, also just it's it's a dangerous thing to say, but I always kind of say, you get to a point where you're living more of your character's life more than you are your life. Hmm. Um, so within that period of, let's say three months of shooting, I'm basically more of lucky than i am tyson yeah because i mean i'm on set for 12 hours after the 12 hours on set i'm going home to spend more time with this guy so mm-hmm. i can learn him better you know what i mean mm-hmm. the only time i have to myself is like what sunday or something like that you know what i mean so you're more that person than you are so you, you the preparation is you 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 live it bro you know it become it becomes like your best friend like i treat my characters like 
my friends. Like I can have a conversation with you now. I'll learn more about you. Every single time we chill more and again and again, I learn more about you. I'd read the same script of the same story for like 10 times before I even look at what are the lines actually saying just holistically as a story just to try understand this human being more so that when I spend time with him we're having a conversation rather than me trying to to read lines yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what I mean yeah. um so the preparation for that was really like really living the character bro um and being immersed in that I think that's that's what I do every time I'm received an opportunity to portray or play somebody else um I immerse myself in that character so much that I become him, you know, mm -hmm. in a sense. It's, it's a dangerous thing to say, but we play with our bodies and we try to just like prepare our minds mentally that we're about to undertake a different body. Does it not become dangerous to who Tyson Matonzi is? It does. Because um, there, there's a huge loss of self that yeah. goes into preparing at that level you're saying you yeah. want to perform at. Yeah. And doesn't that loss of self make you feel some type, type of way and make you lose a lot of who you actually are. It does. And uh, it's funny enough, it's like, as soon as you, um, so I, 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 I do therapy. I highly recommend therapy, man. Uh, because like I said, my, my, my level of preparation requires me to go in that heavily mentally. So I really need to get out of it mentally. You know what I mean? Um, within that period that I'm in that, I really try to surround myself with things and people that remind me of who I am just Tyson besides mm -hmm. the character so that I don't entirely lose myself within the character and I still know that I'm playing one of two worlds but as one body and as one person and as one mind and heart mm -hmm. um, so I really try to keep things that are off sentiment to me um, I talk like my mom my mom is my biggest you know what I mean I, when I'm playing stuff that I really feel like I'm losing myself and I'll call her like 20 times a day you know what I mean um, just to not lose touch of personally who I am as Utai Sin, you know what I mean? And going into how the sex scenes play out, so it's I know it looks crazy. <laughs> it looks like we're actually uh, having sexual intercourse, but it's not it's not it's, it's nothing like that. Everything is is simulated, everything is safe, everything is we have an intimacy coach. So everything is 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 coordinated. It's like a dance. Um, to make sure that you and your partners are safe. There's certain garments that are put into place to make sure that everybody's safe and to make sure that um, we are operating where everybody's comfortable. Yeah, and within set space, we would maybe on a regular set day where we're shooting literally anything, probably have like over 15 to 20 people just like in terms of the camera operator, the per second camera, da 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 But when we're doing sex scenes, it's more of a close set. So they have like the necessary people, just one sound, sound guy, one camera guy, one, you know what I mean? So we really try to make everybody as comfortable as possible so that we can get, you know what I mean? I mean, if you're thinking about not, not being comfortable within a scene that reads, you know what I mean? We have cameras that are crazy these days um, in terms of reading eyes. You know, so um, which is actually also um, a big part of my preparation because I was like, w when I act, bro, I'm really, I'm very like experimental because acting is experimental. It's life. It's fun. I get to be somebody else. You know what I mean? So I'm very experimental in the sense of I don't want to be. Besides running away from being a typecast, I I don't want to be the same person. Even when I'm tossed with playing pretty much guys that would fit into the same category. I want to play him just a tad bit different. You know, let's add a different nuance to this guy or maybe he twitches a little bit every time he does this or this one has anger management issues. So when you attack certain points to him, this is how we reacted. But this guy, he's more of a guy that's more understanding and as much as he's he's done wrongs that he's done to you or within this life that you guys have created, but he, he's, he's, his spectrum of anger would never be to shout or would never be, be to like demean, but his spectrum of anger is very close to sadness because most when we're acting, we, it's, 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 like, it's like lights. Mm -hmm. It's like colors. You know, you color things differently from a darker spectrum to a lighter spectrum. Even when you're scoring in terms of music of a scene, you look at where in the spectrum it fits sure. and you, 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 you score it according to that. Continuing on the line of becoming your characters so much so that it influences your life. Right now, your life is, you're on a telenovela that is big, one of the biggest in the country. Um, you're on Netflix, a very yeah. big show that hit number one in the first few days it was released. You, you have fame. Yeah. You have eyes, eyeballs, attention. Yeah. 
Vuyo Dabulo sat on that seat and he said when he was Gaddafian generations at his peak, he stopped being Vuyo. Yeah. He was clubbing a lot. That. I get that. He was wasting money. Um, and he thought he was better than other people. Mm, just like a character. Do you ever feel yourself slipping into that? Uh, honestly, and in a safe space, it, it, I do. Um, hence why, like I said, I've, 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 I mean, there's no perfect way to approach it, but you put certain tools into place that help you remind you of who you are. You know what I mean? Um, so that you don't entirely lose yourself within the process. Like if you think about what he said, you, you, you 24 seven playing, you, you more of the, the character than yourself. You're more the star. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, if you're not, like I said, if you're not on set 12 hours being that person, you're at home spending time with the person. You are the people you spend the most time with. You're spending so much time with this person more than your friends, more than, you know, to some point I, I, I was in a space where uh, I played a certain character on MTV Sugar. Um, this was a very abusive character. And um, it, 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 that that I would say was was moments where I, I could feel myself losing myself. Um, and within, the, like from that character, I, I realized, no, I have to put things into place to get back to myself because this is my process. I can't allow myself to dip into that process. What he's talking about, I know very well, man, where you're becoming more of your character. Like you find yourself, even when you're speaking to your friends, even when you're speaking to like, why are you so aggressive? Hmm. You know, like, and I didn't realize it for the longest time until I was like, you stop being a kind person. For real, man. Because for I'm real. Person, and I'm the star. Yeah. You like, know what I mean? I'm like, the star. And, I, and as you're saying, I'm spending so much time with the star, I'm influenced by the stardom. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you fit the shoes of your character. And, I, and I, I can't even begin to say if your character is actually a star in the show as well. Do you know what I mean? Where like on the show, you're a star for the show, but you're a star in the show as well. Mm. You know, like mm. your character is very pertinent. He mm. plays this villain guy. You become a villain in real life, you know? Um, and it's like I said, it's a very acting a spiritual, bro. Like in as much as we in to take this, I, I'm a very, I'm a firm believer in God, bro. So I even turning to that, man, you know, I reread my Bible so many times. Um, I try to talk to God as much as, as possible um, just to remind myself who I am. Because, I mean, most of my characters, I wouldn't say fortunate or fortunate enough, but they didn't pray much. Mm. So every time I prayed, I'd feel myself be back to myself. Um, and thereafter, I had to put precautions or measurary stuff to say, hey, after this, I need to see, <laughs> you know? And after this, I need to make sure, hey, if I've shot a heavy block that week, because almost every week there's probably different aims, like your character's in a different space because, I mean, he's growing, you know what I mean? Um, where you'd shoot, like, heavy stuff. Then I'd be like, okay, guys, can we bunch this up all in one week? Then after that week, I know, okay, I need to do something that reminds me of Tyson again because I've just gone through something so heavy because, mm. bro, like, it's so it's so spiritual that sometimes I've even had chats with with more performers and and they're like, bro, you're so right, like, where you find yourself going through the same things that your character's going through, even in real life. You know what I mean? Like, whatever it may be, especially if it's, like, emotional, then it's, it's very emotionally taxing, you know? Hey, family, thank you so much for being loyal to Engineering Your Life. I know that if you're watching this, you're probably here for the second time or the third time. And please, if you're here for the second, third time, please may you kindly subscribe, because if you subscribe, it helps us to get better conversation, get better guests, and get access to creating the best content that we can for you. So please don't forget to subscribe and make sure you continue watching this episode. Allow me to push. What's, yeah. what's the one behavior that you did to a loved one where you're like, Tyson, you've lost it when you reflected? Um, there was a point um, I was having a conversation with somebody. And somebody they know me very well. And I'm not a, I'm very tame. You know how I'm speaking now, even when, uh, like, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm a very, let's try find a better way but before we go to what could escalate this. Um, I was talking to them over the phone and then they came through to my house and then we had a, it was a disagreement, man. And the way that I handled that disagreement, right? And this person knows me very well. Like, like I said, like they can tell me from like, you know what I mean? And I had this disagreement with this person and we were going up and down and da 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 And the way that argument ensued to being 
from something that was so mundane, bro, that could have been handled with just a young, okay, cool, cool, you know, okay, or maybe let's have a conversation. It became such an argument where, like, this particular person was like, stop it, you being snacks, which is the character that I was playing, right? And, bro, it was like a switch, bro. Like, when she said that, like, I literally, like, I kid you not, I stopped. And the tears just started rolling down my eyes. You know what I mean? Because of so many unpacked things. Because also, when you play a character, there's certain things that, well, there's a story you see on screen. Then there's a story you as yourself, as, as the performer, create for yourself to embody the character or to put so much subtext to what you got, to what we present to the general public, right? Um, and in so doing that, those, those, th that story that you've embodied of this guy sometimes it needs to feel you know what I mean and I found myself feeling Snacks' past that day you know um, from there like I literally froze I cried it was, it was like a cold cuddle hug situation I apologized and, it, and like I said from the characters when I realized yo I need to do extrinsic things and to make sure that I bring myself back to myself because you, you could really lose yourself within what you're doing still pushing how do you navigate being a good looking man like yourself and who's got the fame how are you navigating that attention um uh, from people whom are interested in you romantically uh, <laughs> i i appreciate the love i appreciate the support um i always i always make sure man i i i i relay that but I'm a, I'm a very straightforward guy. Like anybody that knows you, I'm I'm not a you know like so I will I won't I don't really entertain it like that. Um, I'm just here. I always put it as a you could be a doctor because I feel like as a, as a performer I'm a healer as well. You know he loves the soul, he loves the body of the mind um, through storytelling, right? So you could be a doctor. I'm a storyteller. We're both healing, but I'm just healing in front of people <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you you for even if you try to save somebody and you can't say that somebody nobody sees that that's you and whatever nobody can say oh no we, we saw you saving this person you're such a hero so i always put it like that as in like it's just my job it's just my career i i wouldn't even say i don't let it because i don't i haven't felt that of like letting it get to me where i'm like oh no i'm this star or whatever the case may be and i think i've been in the industry long enough to understand the industry um in the sense of this is this is a season <laughs> this book about seasons bro mm -hmm. this is a season right and my duty is just to make sure that i get the most out of my season okay because right? it's gonna pass it's yeah. seasons yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. um i get the most out of my season not being too worried about like being famous or the fame or the 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 people that it comes with like i said i appreciate everybody anything else that's organic but i've been in the industry long enough to know that it just comes with the season you know what i mean i can't let the season dictate the longevity of how long i want this I career get, to be i get that yeah. yeah you 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 know what i mean like you get on a, like you can get on a show tomorrow and you could be more famous than me. That's just how it is. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it could end today. You could have a hit today. Even music, you have a hit today. Next week, you have another hit. It's another guy that's new. You know, it's a season where you don't need to let the season dictate your entire year. You know, just use that season to make sure that that entire year is as is. You're saying to me, I can be in season, but I don't need to conform to all the things that people think that people who are in season are doing. Yeah. Because the perception is that there's lots of parties, there's nice cars, yeah. there's fancy vacations, yeah. there is intercourse happening with who, everywhere. who and yeah, everywhere. Everybody wants you. Everybody wants you. And you're saying you have to be bold enough to maintain your principles even then. Even within the season, brother. Because you got to that season because of that. I, you have to be in line in order to receive your season, I believe, mentally, spiritually. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You have to be in line in order to receive your blessings. Yeah, right? You have to mm -hmm. be in the right place at the mm -hmm. right time mm -hmm. type thing for you to receive that season. So if that's what it took for you to get there, how do you stop doing what you've been doing all the time to get there to maintain this? So how's the how's after the season looking? 
you know? So I think once you understand it's a seasonal thing, you don't let it get to your head because I think what gets to people's heads most of the time is because at that point in time, you, you're you on top of the world, bro. Everybody wants to be a friend. Everybody wants to be with you. Everybody wants to be besides you. You know, whatever the case may be, besides people that admire your work and take pictures with you, but just in general, um, there's a shift even in society of who you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's 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 just because it's your season, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And how long that lasts depends on how you treat this season. So you can't treat it any different than when you were off season. So you can't now start partying a lot when you weren't partying. So now you're not practicing as, as much. So now you're not producing the quality of work you used to produce. Sure. And as soon as you do that, it's it's a matter of a month or two and then it starts, oh, this guy's not so good no more. Yeah, yeah. Or there's a new guy that comes in that's better than you. Who's like, hungry? Oh, you know what I mean? Mm. Oh, it's, if, any, if, 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 if I've been taught anything within the eight years that I've been trying to do this is talent is important, but it's the hard work and resilience behind that. It's the humility behind that. It's the respect behind that because at the end of the day as well, you you are the people. Your work is the people. You're only working because of the people. You know what I mean? Like once you, once you understand that as well, you, you're not bigger than anybody else. You know, these humans create you. Mm-hmm. That, you know, I used to also be, I was always be like, it doesn't make sense to take somebody who's got more followers over somebody that's more talented because the followers were made by the people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All you need to do is feed this person to the people and automatically they're on the yes. same plateau. I hear you. You know what I mean? So once you've been in this game for long enough where you kind of understand like when it's your season, you got to focus on doing better for when you're off season and not focusing on other things. You can. It's your choice. But after being here for so long, mm-hmm. I've understood that most people that have sure. made it even off season. Yeah, yeah. Because some people, you're just like, yeah, you're like, bro, it's been your season for 10 years, bro. Mm. Yeah, yeah. How are yeah. you How are you doing yeah. this? Yeah. And some people, it's three months. Yeah. Some people, it's one show. Uh-huh. Some, you know what I mean? How How do you differentiate all these people? Sure. It's what they do when they're in season. Okay, so now I have a choice. I can entertain these things. They're there, definitely. They, they, they're calling, but I can entertain those things, which is going to be cool. You know, but when it's off season, then what? Who will I be? You, you, What's left? You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, you can't, can't write a text, you know, no more, chief. You understand? So even with even financially, you got to make sure that even when you're off season, you're on season. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now you, you can't, you, you've, there's this plateau that people have put you on. You're international. You, you know what I'm saying, bro? It's Tyson. What are you doing in this text, direct? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? So I feel like once you've understood that and you take yourself more like a business, you 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 know what I mean? You you go you get past that season and it would keep seeming like it's your season, you know, even when it's not. But because sure, sure, sure. you've maintained a certain discipline through your season, you know. Do you believe you are living in your purpose? Or you are still searching and you and you can explain either or? Yeah. Um I believe I am, but I believe there's always room to do more uh, in life for self. I feel like as a human being, you're, you're forever evolving. Um, we're forever changing. You know what I mean? Somebody can come to you and say, dog, looks like you've changed. And I'm like, yeah, because I mean, you know, mm. there's certain things you've gone through in life that have challenged you and made you a better or whatever person, but you've changed. You, you can't deny that, you know? Even in, through your way of thinking, you've changed. You know what I mean? Um, so with that, bro, like... <laughs> okay, I'm trying to circle back to your question. Do you believe you're living living in, in my purpose? purpose? I'm trying to find a way to circ- circle back to it. So within that, bro, as as you're evolving as a human being, right? I can be living in my purpose now, but my purpose could change in a year. I get you. You know? I could want different things in a year. I could, I could, my aim could be a million this year, could be six million next year. Mm-hmm. Can't be another million. I've mm-hmm. done that now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Type thing. So it's like you, you're evolving as a human. So your purposes change. However, I feel like my soulful purpose that will forever evolve in terms of the lens of how I want to go, but will forever stay consistent is healing people. Okay. You know? So in whichever way that I can heal people, be it, and I feel like even sports, heals people, unites people, you know. I feel like um, podcasts, the stuff that you guys do, heals yeah, people. Yeah, people get to, yeah, yeah. get to 
damn, bro, get to talk and be more of themselves than they've been in any other area of Absolutely. their lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. So healing, bro, is the purpose that I feel like I've been brought here to do and the purpose that I feel like I will continue to do even in different spectrums of whatever I decide to indulge in. That's interesting because you're saying that somehow as humanity, we're all struggling with something. We're yeah. all broken somewhere. And you're saying, God has brought me onto this earth to be a vehicle to heal. Yeah. But how I'm healing, I will always follow what God is saying. Heal like this yeah. in this season. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, and then that, what you're saying is exactly what I'm saying in the sense of like, for instance, I, that's why I mentioned sports. I used to be a rugby player. Right, to play SA schools, um, and I got injured. Typical, <laughs> typical, typical story. You know what I mean? Um, and I had contracts, bro. You know, really lined up to go play for Stormers, Sharks, Lions. I even had international contracts in France. You know, so it was like, this is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna heal people. Every time I score a try, I see, I see white people kissing black people, hugging black. Like it's a, mm. that's how much healing it does bro mm, that's how much mm, mm. like unification it brings you know what i mean and um when i got injured bro i was really in a place of like i don't like using the word depression but for like a week bro i was really in in a, in a space like that where i didn't understand what my purpose was you know i was like 17 bro i hadn't fully like established healing is what it is through different spectrums for sure but healing is what it is right and like i said to highlight on your point of saying wherever god points me at that point in time bro after like a week of going through this like heavy depression bro not knowing what to do at that time i'm also like writing exams you know what i mean it was, just, it was just crazy bro and having to deal with like i'm a bursary student so having to deal with like them kind of having to make a decision, do we keep this nigga? He's in grade 11. We still want to teach him for a whole year for free. He's not playing now, you know? And luckily enough, I was, I was a smart guy as well. So they're just like, hey, it's fine. Instead of making it 50 sports, 50 uh, academics, we're making 100 academics. Mm. Cool, right? But then even within that, like something is said to me, bro, just take a walk, bro. You know? I'm like the fifth day, bro. I took a walk. I'm feeling low, you know, even the, everybody, like even the school council, we had a school council, she's trying to talk to me. She's like, dog, you, you just thought just, you're not Tyson, bro. Like you so bubbly, you so like, you're not. And I'm just like, but I can't even like try fake it because this is just what it is. Mm. I was crying, bro, for all those days. I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, at first I'm like, how am I going to pay for the school? It's like a hundred and whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I'm here because I play rugby, you know, and uh like, what am I going to do now with my life? This is the, this was my ticket out of what the situations I was I was at back home. This is what got me here. This was what I was supposed to change my life. So what's my purpose now? Hmm. But you know what I mean? Like I was faced with that. And I always tell people, bro, like I'm a I'm a believer not because my mom believed superly, she still does, and we are Christian home. But I don't just believe because of that. It's because bro, God has shown himself through me so many times, bro, where when I'm at my lowest and I'm really like, yo, like, bro, like, yeah. come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, I took that walk, man. I saw auditions for a, um, a theater show at UKZN. So I used to go to Pierre Marisburg for school. I saw um, uh, for a theater show at UKZN. I was like, okay, cool. I just grabbed the thing. I went back to my thingy. I was like, okay, cool. I looked at, I looked up the scripts. There was like a little website there. I was like, okay, cool. No, let me just go try this out. You know, and the couple of days, I think I was, I was, it happened. I broke my leg on the Saturday. Then it was that whole week of depression. And then on, I got, on Friday, I took the walk. Saturday, Sunday, I was reading the script. The auditions were Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I still, Monday, I was like, nah, I'm not going to do this. Tuesday, I was like, nah, I'm not going to do this. Wednesday, I was like, you know what? Like last minute, I was like, ah, let me just go. Bro. Sure. You sure. know? And I'm having this conversation with myself. I haven't spoken to anybody to say, hey, bro, I'm actually going back to acting. Hey, because I used to do it as a kid, you know? Um, I go and I get the role. And I'm like, oh, oh wait, maybe you got something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the more I did it, the more I fell in love with it. The more I, 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 I indulged in different characters, the more I was like, oh, damn. The more I indulge in very heartfelt 
healing type stories that touch the heart, not just your passerby stories. There's those stories that are just, no, no, they're good, but I really want to indulge deeper into humans, bro. You know, being relatable, um, touching you and healing you from things that you don't even know you were supposed to heal from. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and from there, bro, it's, it's really just a, a story of me trying to get back to this. I was like, okay, cool. Iman <laughs> Vela Eko. Yeah, where is that going? We're not nice like that. So let me do these young. I got in, I got uh, the presenting for one case then. I did a couple of theater stuff. I did uh, a movie. There's a, there was a movie that was shooting by my hood. Uh, all of a sudden, all these things opened up that were avenues for me to tackle. Um, I, I went there and then and, and I got that role as well. And I was just begging, kind of like just cash on the side to go to Joburg. You know what I mean? I got jobs here and there, even when I got here, uh, waiting on jobs here. I did, I did some, I some crazy stuff um, just to make up the money, you yeah. make sure that I come to school here. And then I came to Joba. What's interesting to me in, in what you're saying is injury signifies adversary. It signifies being broken. Yeah. It signifies um, an untimely disappointment. Yeah, something man. that was not part of your plans. Yeah. You've done well to be disciplined and be committed to something, your rugby career. And here, this thing that just derails you completely. After that derailment, you go into depression, the moment of grieving the pain of losing something that you love. Yeah. Um, you, the, the, the bursary situation, now I've lost this. How am I going to feed myself? And God comes and repivots you. Yeah. Um, you go back to something you loved again. Yeah. That you had let lie down. Yeah. You start acting. And you've re-pivoted into being where you are today. So in that, sometimes when we're down, lying flat on our backs, um, it's it, possibly the only time we get to think that I'm actually beyond just Tyson the rugby guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, man, I was obsessed with the rugby. Now, I still am. I still watch it. I love the sport so much. But like, it was like, you know what I mean? Like, so in that point of lowness, you, you write when you say, bro, sometimes like, just chopping a tree in the middle doesn't help. You have to take it from the root. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to really be at your lowest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. go any lower than that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? Lower than that. For God to build now the life and the purpose that he wants for you. You know what I mean? Being being Tyson, like me, the kid from Eskawini, 035, I could have never went to a school that I went to. Mm -hmm. Ever. I would, I, it's not even something I thought about. You know what I mean? But I was there. After that, I was pushing to be the person that I am today. But I could have never thought that at this point in time, in 2024, I'd be sitting next to you and I'd be the person that I am today. Sure, sure. Do sure. you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's bro, a relationship with God is a, I'd li I like to call it a, it's a love hate strange, but I have I shout at God sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, like you know what I mean? Like within that five days, I saw myself. And the crazy thing is that when I went through that five days, I boxed into my head for my for my acting stuff. And so I went through after I went through it, I was like, that was crazy. Actually, I know now that if you're so broken, this is not this is not the spectrum of color you actually play most Come times yeah. as a human being. You yeah. play this, yeah, yeah. You know, just like how. In funerals, for instance, um, like I'm not coding anything, but to just be like, because everything is a choice, acting is a choice. But sometimes you'd want to result to really pushing and crying your eyes out and bawling your eyes out when you're at a funeral, um, when you're acting, right? But in retrospect, when you look at an actual funeral, people cry, try, try so much to actually not cry. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, and that's and that's where and that's why I like every time now I read a script, I read it backwards in terms of I I go I play against the 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 the, the, the script because at the end of the day, that's how normal humans are. You you acting is about you you shouldn't you shouldn't try. It should be if anything, you're trying not to. You know, if you're drunk, you're trying to like have another drink. You're not trying to have your friends take you home. Like, nah, dog, you've had too much. You're trying to not get drunk, right? So playing against is, you know what I mean, in the biggest spectrum of things, plays a much stronger color of choice, 
I've I found and even having gone through that phase and been like, okay, this is this is okay when I was in this point and I went through all the spectrum stuff. I screamed, oh God, I I I was like, okay, cool. I I'm calm now. <laughs> you know, sure. let's have a nice conversation. What what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Who's gonna who's gonna pay? Am I going back home? I'm not gonna do that. that I'm, that's not what I, you know what I mean? Like and within those conversations and having now having a, a, a point to reflect, I was like, bro, God ans- like answered me in that time. I, well, I'm not a walk guy. I don't really take walks outside of campus even, mm-hmm. you know? But I was like, let me, let, me, let me just take a walk. You know, I took a route I've never taken before. You know, I was just walking to nowhere, bro. You know what I mean? In order for me to find and, and, and for me to, to see it and be interested in it and go for it, there's a pull factor that's pulling you towards that. What is that? I, 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 I have to this day, I have no idea. But it's to the purpose that I am today. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Do you know what I mean? In the, yeah. in, in the in the journey to everything, there is the principled root, the root that um, has hurt, has pain. It has a lot of rejection. It has a lot of hurdles. Sometimes you find in that root there are potholes. Um, even when you're driving. And there are shortcuts where you can trample on other people's heads to get what you want. Yeah. Um, you're a good looking man. I know you've said no to somebody trying to offering you yeah. to propagate your career. Yeah. Push you to the top. Yeah. In exchange for selling your soul. Have you ever had to say no? And why did you say no? Uh yeah, yeah I feel like everybody's gone through that. Um No, not actually. No, no, no. I've had many people on that chair. For real? That I'm not doing it. Many people on that chair, yeah, they, man. There's a just... specific aesthetic I know you have <laughs> that means that people want you yeah. for various reasons. Yeah. Personal pleasure. Yeah. And they said, I'll make your dreams come true. Yeah. 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 I, and crazy enough, it came uh, when I was uh, transitioning from what I came, what I came was because I came to, to uh, further perfect this acting thing now. I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me just gather this money, go study it, right? Studied it. And it came at a point where I, when, I was, when I was about to finish, you know, and they're like, man, you got potential. You know? You got, you can, you know, and I got a show right now. That's all. <laughs> you're already <laughs> airing. No, no, like, yo, and so I can, I can put you on, you know what I mean? Um, and in that point in time, bro, it was, you know, you had a point where you, I just came there, bro. I really don't know anything about the industry, bro. And my first contact is me being in the school, bro, right? And now the first person I meet from that is saying this. So in my head, I was like, damn, that's how it'd be like? So this really? must be it. No, 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 no. I was like, because I'm, I'm, I'm a type of person, bro, like, I, I am not depicted by situations or by people. I try to remain myself as much as I possibly can, right? So even within that advance, I wasn't like, Oh no, like you're not gonna I'm very calm when it comes to stuff. But I was like, I, I literally asked, like, so this is a, oh, this is how it is? And you you know, and you know, it just starts being a a story of like, hey, you know this person? This person did it. You know, and I'm just like, Yeah, but that's me, I should do it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I've had av- advances like that, but in terms of me understanding who I am and understanding where I want to go, even and understanding where God has placed me, even opportunities like that, bro, like, you could do it. You're going to get one role. You, you know, you could do it, then you get the role. And then what after that? I'm like, like from, from when I was talking about this season, when we were talking about, I'm all about sustainability. I'm all about longevity. You know what I mean? You, what's, 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 the, what's it going to do for me? You know? I'm not going to be able to sustain getting into this not the way that I should in terms of being able, you know, being able, having the talent and being able to. I didn't get it like that. I got to do what I have. Okay, I can get that show for sure, but what, what, what else am I going to get? Because mm-hmm. even when I get to that point, I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. It wasn't God's time, bro. Yeah, yeah. You're not ready. Mm. So even if you get that opportunity, you're not, you're not going to exploit it to the best of your opportunities. You're going to get one opportunity and then that's it. So Shabalala, if it's into enga na unkulunkulu, ngai shule nukas. Into enga na unkulunkulu. Yeah. I must say it. Yeah, yeah. We have learned. Into enga tholwa ngendlela. Approve unkulunkulu. I must say it. Imland. Yeah. 
like I said, in Abam Nandi for that time, Ibim Nand, we ends and the Ubufan Tienz, Kubem Yabolont, but niggas of this pan of funnest niggas, but what about the sustainability? God said it wasn't your time though. What are you, you, you're at the wrong place. Even for now, the longevity blessings that we're talking about, you, you, you're not in place to get that. Do you know what I mean? I always say, I think it's crazy because once it's, it's, you're only as good as your best, as your current show. You know, so if you're on a show and you're not doing so great because you weren't ready to get the role, you're there for one month and then it's beyond the guy that you slept with or the girl that you slept with. Now they got to cut you, bro. You're not ready. What was an offer? What is it? What was on offer? Uh, it was a roll, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a roll. Yeah, yeah, it was a and, but I mean, at that time. What a damn cheap offer. No, but listen, <laughs> at that time, bro, like, I, I, you, I got to a point, like, because I, I, I always look at things, like, in so many spectrums, right? I looked at it and I was like, this nigga probably thinks, like, this is, the, like, this nigga's desperate right now. Like I said, I'm almost going to graduate. What are you going to do after you graduate? Sit. There's a job, bro. You know, at that point in time, you're not even thinking money, bro. Just job. Just job. All I want is job right now. So if this if this person offers you a job, you said nigga, it's fine, carry on. It's fine. <laughs> but like, if this guy, if this guy offers you a job, bro, <laughs> they, they, like even so, he can see, nah, this guy, what do you got? Yeah. He, he needs the job. Mm. That's mm. what's gonna convince him. You know. So to walk away from that, bro, and I remember I even had a, I had a point, um, hey, bro, my, I, had a, I went to my friend straight after that that day, right? I um, went to my friend, Adam, and he was like, man, let's just chill, let's have some wine, bro, you know? And, bro, yo, like, there was a, after I came there, more friends came through, and they came through with just like a group of people. And it just, it was like, just our vibe, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got told this, it was a Friday, you know? So I'm like, let me just go to my guys, you know, let me just, you know, I get there, bro, and it's a house full of people, Everybody's partying. It's just me and my boy. We at the balcony. We're drinking the wine. We're talking about life. I tell them, boy, they offered me this, boy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, boy, like they offered me this, boy. Like, how? Like, so this is the only way, boy. Hey, we cried, bro. You know what I mean? Like, we pulled our eyes out, bro, you know? And it was really just the point of saying, bro, just keep to what you have to do. You're here for a reason. When it's God's timing, bro, it's gonna be like what it is now so we know it was a nigga who wanted to give you a role but you're not you're not, you're not telling us what you were supposed to do uh, yes, <laughs> no but it was the exchange level okay yeah hey, <laughs> that's the end of the level i don't understand the duty level that's the end of the duty level hey bro so it's, it was uh, something like that bro but like at the end of the day i just feel like if you if you if you self-aware and like I said, bro, most things like that, bro, of what I've learned in general, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're not sustainable. Correct. They Correct. don't last. Yeah. In fact, you just come into the industry and embarrass yourself more. Then more people know they'd be a boss. Huh? Mm -hmm. So who's going to work with you? Yeah. You, know? yeah. you had no points of self-development because you clearly have no work ethic to trust mm -hmm. if you want such shortcuts to compromise even your sexuality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Because it went beyond compromising the fact that I just don't want to have sex with yeah. this person. Yeah. Now it goes to um, this, but this is not my sexual identity as you well. You know what I mean? And but the fact that you're even thinking about it, it's a conversation you're having with your head, like to say, bro, I've been offered this. What the, what, like, what, what? You know what I mean? Like, why should you be having those conversations with yourself? You know what I mean? Like, so it puts you in that position, bro. And I feel like if you, if you, if you, if you stagnant and saying, this, this is who I am, this is what I have to bring. I'm willing to put in the hard work, bro. Don't give me the shortcuts. You know what I mean? I'm willing to start at the bottom and do, boy, I was an extra, bro. You know what I mean? Like after that Shandy's, bro, wait, cause like I, it happened like after, and, and after it, that happened with that nigga and I, I turned it down, right? Straight after that, bro, God was like, here's Selly Matunzi. I got Selly Matunzi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was a Selly Matunzi presenter for like a whole year. Yeah, I started yeah. off as a guest presenter. So sure. then they just started using me every single week. So sure. and I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so when when you when you put God first in certain things, he sometimes quickly says, mm. Oh shit, mm. I see how how, how you respond. I, I see, yeah. You know, I see where you at, bro. Yeah. Let me yeah. give you a little something to keep you so, going. So, so you know so. what I mean? So man, like it, it comes to show, bro. 
there is reward for maintaining God's principles, even when it's most tempting. And when it's most tempting, that's when God rewards you the most because mm. he sees your efforts in, oh, you really needed this. Oh, you're the provider at home. Oh, there's so many of these, these spectrums that could challenge you. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you're like, nah, bro, you know, this person wasn't here when I got injured and I, you know, and I started doing this and I put together money to come here. This person wasn't here when I was struggling with my mom and I have to provide for my mom right now. This, this is not going to get me the sustainability that I need mm. for what I need to provide for. You know what I mean? So you sticking to all those roots of yourself, bro, like really helps you even in terms of longevity. And I've spoken to even legends, bro. I've had like conversations with so many people and one common thing that they say is that, bro, just stick to your own, bro. Be a good person and you're going to be good. You know what I mean? Push it. And just to the extent where, like we said, talent is trailing now. It's who you know. Who like who who likes you? Who thinks you know what I mean? Like not even like like that, but like in terms of like, oh, he's Longado's a cool guy. You know what I mean? Like let's put him on. No, actually, if we work with him, he's a great guy to work with. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. That plays more factor now than the talent, bro. So the people that you know, the relationship that you make that are genuine go a very long way rather than getting a quick buck of like sleeping with a guy or a woman just to get one role. It's one role. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then somebody told me that they're like, bro, it's just it's just one role. It's, I understand right now, it feels like it's, it's, it's just one role. You need the next one now, you know? Just like in interviews, after interviews, they're like, oh, so, so after landing Netflix, Tyson, what's next? After Netflix? That's international, what do you mean? Mm, you know, mm, like, mm. there's just always more, bro. Mm, mm, there's mm. always more to do. And with more, you need to take the escalators instead of like, you know what I mean? The elevator. Because once you get to the top, then the fatigue of the people that took the escalator you can see in comparison to the people that took the elevator. Mm, 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 mm. You know what I mean? Because then you, when you put the two together, you can see it's all feet, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's spawning it behind this one. No, I'm both floating. Mm, mm. Yeah, well, so it comes a point where that's very exposed. And having knowledge of that and backing that with the decisions that you make, even when you're presented with such things, helps you, bro. You speak so fondly of your mother. Yeah, that's my angel. That's my love. Uh, okay, not be stealing my question. Uh, what does your mom mean to you? And why do you speak so fondly of her and not necessarily a father, a sister? Um, what's the difference in those relationships? Uh, so I do have a sister, but I have a sister um, on my father's side. So with my mom, I'm the only child. Um, my mom is there, bro. My mom is like, she's my oh, like my everything, bro. Like, um, we, I've just, there's been so many life um challenges. I'll put it that me and my mom have faced um together. Um, with with dad, bro, I don't really know him like that. Uh, I know him now, because <laughs> I'm on TV, <laughs> you know. But um, you know, it's crazy to only speak to your dad after so many years. That was actually the first day I aired on City Matunzi. And I hadn't spoken to him since I was like 11 or 12, I know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so the whole time I've just been going through life with my mom, you know, um, hard worker, bro. Like she's made it work off like nothing. You know what I mean? Um, it's even in hard, hard situations where you, I don't like indulging too much into it, but um. There was just there's the scenarios that we've gone through in life that have bonded me and my mom together. Me playing rugby was not just a healing process to the people that enjoyed seeing me play. It was a healing process to myself because there was a whole lot of things that was going um, behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Like within the dynamics that my dad brought to the relationship or the you know the whole dynamic. And um, my mom's just been amazing bro like she's she's just taken it like a like a queen you know what i mean um and she's carried me to where I, I have been today um and i think more than anything like emotionally and mentally bro like i'm a like bro i like you might like i think very distinctively you know and it's because of that woman sure you know the decisions that i make are because of that woman you know i think the strength to 
even like the, what we just spoke about now to say that's not what we, that's not what I'm here for comes purely from that woman's teachings and us having gone through such deep situations man and her and seeing how she just dealt with that even within moments where it was just like bro like this doesn't even make sense you know um even in us gaining momentum she was working and uh, the, the the dad was supposed to be paying for you know the schools and stuff like that and the, that ended up not being paid and we ended up and she saw that like five years after that this nigga hasn't been paying from grade one that's crazy mm -hmm. you know what I mean like and it's it's, it's, it's just things like that man and just the, the way she took on that um, we've, we've 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 lost so many things to the extent where we had nothing my mom um, but God just like I said, bro, God has shown himself so much in my life, bro. I got rugby bursaries from that age from when it was like, so now what are you going to do, bro? They said, no, nah, we need this guy. You know what I mean? From from nothing, from having nothing, from being homeless. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you know, like you, we need this guy. I think, I think just to make you understand that there is purpose in the fullness of your story Brenda Mdamber uh, sat on King David's studio and she said when she went to university firstly she didn't have money for university but she applied for university and her pastor at church said you don't have clothes we can see you don't have clothes here's money for Christmas clothes mm. she said I took the money instead and because I'd been accepted for university at UKZN, I paid for registration. I had no accommodation. I had, I had nothing. Yeah. And she said, when I got to university, I then got uh, a, a job at Joyous Celebration to yeah. be a backing vocalist. Yeah. Luckily, just a few months into university. Yeah. And she said, before that job, before I was 18, my grandmother didn't have electricity. It was just me and my grandmother in Umlazi. Mm. We were the only house on the road that doesn't have electricity. Because we couldn't have money to, to buy electricity. Yeah. So, for fullness of your story, how deep did it get? And look at where she is now. She said, God just keeps redirecting you. Yeah. You're committed to the dream. Yeah. Brenda Dumbo started backing for Joyous Celebration 20 years ago. She's 41 now. Yeah. And she's a household name in her own right. Yeah. But that story started from a lady who had to buy something as basic as electricity for back home. Yeah. Because Gran wouldn't have electricity if she didn't send the money. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Um, like I said, there was going to be no school if there was no rugby. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and like I said, bro, my mom was was working, but you know what I mean, bro. Like, so even with that, she 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 picked herself up even after the whole fatherly stuff and the and and and, and us having to go through being that low. Mm. She picked herself up, man. And my mom was a funder, a boy dog. I'm sure she's planning on doing a doctor in something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she's just that type of person, man. So she 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 put her stuff together. And she worked. And she made it work. She made it work, man. And luckily enough, it's called as Coco Rap very much. Yeah, yeah. So even the theater, the acting games, the acting stuff, I was cognizant of, hey, I, like, I love this. This is yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. But, but I gotta go to school. <laughs> this so doesn't what? this doesn't pay school right now. So sure. this is what this is the purpose. This mm. is what I'm gonna focus on. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. Have you ever felt like the mistakes you've made as a man, even how you've treated women who inherited from not having a father? Um, no. Because I think, uh, I think I treat women fairly well. I mean, they can say that, that. Say that but I think I, I treat women fairly well, man. And I think it's because of my, and I, I mean, I, I, I'm not taken away from anybody's trauma that, 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 that pinpoints that out to not having a father. But I fully believe in first of all, in this world, we are a carve and you carve yourself as a human being. You know what I mean? You carve yourself through the access of people that you have, not the access of people that you don't have. So instead of having a father figure to look up to, like most men would be privileged to have, I looked up to the greater picture of myself and my life of how it would be. And that's what I keep chasing. You know what I mean? Not having a father is not affecting me in the sense of 
I look at how my mom would have wanted to be treated. I look at everything my dad did and I look at how I can reverse that because that's, that's not how it should be. Mm, mm, mm. But there's an opposite of that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's really, like I said, when I'm placed in situations, bro, I really, I really work with what I can get, not what I can't get. So I'm on a drool over or be like, uh, the way that I treat women is because you know, I treat women very nicely because I know how my mom would have wanted to treat it. She communicated that very well with me. My, like I said, me and my mom are like best friends, bro. So she would tell me, but this is how, actually, and like a couple of years ago, funny enough, like um, a quick story, I bought my mom flowers. She's always been a person to be like, I don't like flowers. I, I, it's just not my thing. I, uh, you know, just emotional, you know? Mm. And a couple of years ago, then, but but eight, seven years ago, now, I bought her flowers for the first time, and she was so happy. She was like, "Yo, I actually didn't know. Like, you feel so happy when people buy you flowers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's, it's 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 certain things where you are like, no, I see how you want to be treated. It's just not what you know, you know. So you're gonna be it's like, been a oh, trauma response. You know, to say no, I I don't no lazy man. You know, yeah. you know. But when I did that, she was just like so melted to the extent where I'm like. Okay, so I've been gauging the right things of saying this is how she actually wants to be treated. Everything that my, I mean, I, I wasn't, I'm, I didn't look at my mom and dad's relationship like that, like, because I also won't say everything he did, you know, but like of what I know and the situations that I know and that have brought us to where we are today, I would do the total opposite. No, 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 that's fair. Uh, yeah. Because they say it's either you emulate the abandonment and the abuse. Yeah. Or you actually learn it from it. They do against it completely. Yeah. So to the thousands of women watching, if Tyson has ever done you wrong, please comment and tell us <laughs> if he's telling the truth. I'm joking, bro. Uh, last but not least, uh, I know you spoke a lot about God and your relationship with God. Yes. Um, and of course, if it's your truth, it's, it's, it, it, you're allowed to answer this, this, this final thought in yeah. that way. Um, what's that one thing in life you're absolutely certain of? What's that one thing you know for sure? In any spectrum? Any spectrum. I know I've spoken about God a lot, man. It's like God exists, bro. Mm. You know, like I said, man, I can't stress it enough. Like, yo, I mean, maybe I, I, it's the fortunacy of, I don't know. But it's just like, every time I pray, like something happens, bro. It might not happen immediately. Maybe not in three months. Maybe not a year. I've gone through, like I said, I've been in this industry for eight years. But I'm only getting my lick, like probably now. I, I probably started getting my lick a bit last year when I'm mm -hmm. on MTV Sugar, mm -hmm. right? So that's seven years of nothing. You know, I huh. got, I got Tilly Matunzi. Yeah. You know, I got, I got at the deep city, I did uh, grassroots, I did one month, two months, three months. Doesn't build a career. Absolutely. I'm only starting to build the foundation of my career now in terms of at the top of the work that's underneath. The so, sure, sure, sure. You know what I mean? So if it's taught me anything, bro, like, bro, God is real, bro. Like, he's taking me out of the most craziest situation. So whatever anybody's going through in this moment in time, bro, like, I, I'm not even trying to cap you. Like, he's listening. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's listening and you are, look at whatever you're going through as learn from it, you know? Learn from it as much as you can. Take it as an opportunity to develop yourself, to grow yourself. Maybe if I was, if I got these opportunities I'm getting now five years ago, I probably wouldn't have handled it the same. I would have flunked out on some other things. I probably wouldn't be happy with the work that I did, whatever. But there's just certain plays that get put into place by God for the life that he wants for both of you guys to, to pioneer. Yeah. I don't know about you, but for me, um, Tyson is reflecting on the fact that it, it took eight years to finally see the light, whatever the light meant to him. But he's saying right now, I'm currently living in a light which took so many trials and errors. There were so many no's. There were so many things that looked like it was the light coming, but it wasn't the light that I really wanted. There is a, a lesson of waiting in there. There is a lesson of patience. There's also a lesson of saying no to things that... It's not their time yet. Yeah. And, and, and appreciating that the right time will come. 
Yeah. Tyson Lungelo Matoni. <laughs> Beautiful name. <laughs> Thank you so much, my brother, for coming. Thank um, you. I wish you the best for your career. Um, I wish that we don't get any comments from the woman you've hurt. <laughs> hey, no, 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 so no, 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 okay. And, and thank you, man. Thank you for your time. And it's really been a privilege. And both of you and I are young people, probably in the same age range. Yeah. And I hope this conversation empowers others who are not particularly living their dreams. You and I are right yeah. now. Yeah. And they see that young men who look like them, I'm, you from Eskawini, I'm from Umlaz, yeah. can, I mean, every, can, yeah, like, can be everything they want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hear, man. It's possible. Yeah. You know, it's possible. Hard work, resilience. Resilience more than anything, bro. You know? Yeah, like if, if anything, outside of hard work and yeah. building yourself as whatever you want to be, mm -hmm. uh, bro. We'll take care of you. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs> Thank you. Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.